Rattler Vlog, episode 27, men's volleyball, Justin Bacalonia. Now, we've had lots of uh, current players, we've had alumni, we've had coaches, we've had a lot of different things, but I don't think we've ever had one of the new prospects. So, let's get him on right now. Let's talk to Justin and find out a little bit more about one of the uh, faces of the future of Rattler's men's volleyball. There he is. There he is. This is Justin, everybody. How are you, my friend? Good. How are you? Good. 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 Thanks for uh, joining us here tonight. Thanks for reaching out to the Rattlers and uh, and uh, being a part of this vlog. Now, I got a bunch of questions. No small talk. We're going to jump right into it. First of all, correct pronunciation of your last name. Thessalonia. Ah, see, I got it wrong. <laughs> it's probably not the first time. Now. Okay, you come to the Rattlers by way of Florida and then McCoy High School, if I'm not mistaken. Not exactly a conventional route uh, for, ma for many ACAC players. Tell me a little bit about how this all happened uh, for you. Um, well, I, I moved here from Florida like, um, when I was like six, I think. So, and I've, so I've been in Canada since then and then started playing middle school volleyball and then high school volleyball and then down at the Rattlers, <laughs> I guess. Okay. So you still remember a lot of your childhood growing up in Florida then, right? I mean, it's probably, do you have, do you have lots of family there still? Um, I have like my, some of my godparents and my grandma lives there in there too as well. Good. Why are there so many weird news stories that always come out of Florida? What's your take on that? Why is that? Every time anything weird happens in the world, it's usually Florida. I don't know. <laughs> It's a weird place sometimes. Yeah. Good, good. So tell me a little bit about your family then. Uh, your siblings, your parents, your grandparents, and so on. A little bit about you. Um, I have three uh, well, I have three siblings, including myself. I have an older brother, and I have an older sister. They're both, well, my sister is going to Nate for business, I'm pretty sure. And my brother just graduated from U of A from, for, from business as well. And then... My parents, my dad's currently laid off, and my mom works at the hospital. Um, not my sister doesn't. My sister and I really don't play sports, but my parents, my parents used to. Um, my dad played on the national team for basketball in the Philippines, and my mom played on the national team for volleyball. So, wow! So you've got some volleyball. You got volleyball bl uh, running through your veins, then, don't you? <laughs> yeah, most from most from my mom, but yeah. Wow. So uh, tell me, sorry, you said your dad played for the national team then? Is that correct? For basketball, yeah. Oh, for basketball. Okay. And, and then your mom played. So was that, a, was that a big decision? Because I do know that uh, basketball is very popular in the, in the Philippines and so on. And so I'm sure he's really passionate about that even to this day. Um, well, yeah, I played basketball in middle school. I think it was just like one of the things where it's like, oh, like, you're athletic, you're pretty good at like sports, you have to play it. Um, but I really fell in love with volleyball instead of basketball. Mm -hmm. So that's just the way like the path took me is just volleyball instead of basketball. And I'm kind of too short for basketball anyway. So Okay, why? What are your stats? Your, your playing stats? How tall are you? And um, five, five. Okay, so there you go. I mean, that's, that's why you're a libero then, isn't it? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Good. So how was the uh, season at McCoy then? Was it, uh, did you play three seasons with the, the Colts then? Yeah, since grade 10. Um, okay. it was pretty good this year. Um, we, had a, we only had two seniors left this year. And then the rest were um, like a new group of people, a whole bunch of grade 10s. So there's a lot, a lot of th new things to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did quite well. We, we didn't do too good in uh, the school, like like the league in town, as we wanted to do. But uh, the tournaments we went to, we competed hard. We got fifth at the big LC tournament in Lethbridge. Uh, we got gold uh, in Red Deer. So, and then the rest okay. of that, we didn't really place, but we played hard until the end all the times. So. Are you a uh... Are you a proud Colt? Are you going to look back in your three years playing volleyball with that uh, red and black uniform and just kind of red? You'll, looks... you'll always feel like a Colt player, really. Oh yeah, when I look back on it, I think I'll be happy that I, I played at McCoy. 
Look at that. Did, did you notice that on your screen there? As soon as we mentioned McCoy, a whole bunch of hearts went up on the side of the screen there. I think we got some McCoy Colts fans here. <laughs> probably. Probably got a few. Yes. Uh, probably. I think I saw Kennedy Weary on here earlier. I would imagine that that could have been her, but uh, it's uh, tough to say uh, in that regard. So so what do you what do you enjoy about playing libero? I mean, it's, it is one of the more challenging uh, positions to play in volleyball. You got a lot of responsibility there. Why do you enjoy that position so much? Um, well, I think I get a really, it's like a really fun to like dig a really hard ball because anyone can like hit a, like a T line ball all any day, but not everyone can dig a ball. Okay. I don't know. The rush of like just having like the authority to control people in the back row of like how defense should be and just like taking initiative is just like the rush just like keeps you going. I don't not too, I don't really know. This mm -hmm. is the passion just there. Is it, is it safe to say that for most volleyball teams, the libero is kind of the quarterback? You are kind of directing traffic on the court there. Would you, would you say that's true? Um, Defensive-wise, yeah. Um, always just, like, knowing where everything, like, what the, how, like, the, how the play is happening, how um, where the blockers are, where the hitters are, just, like, coordinating where, like, where to go and everything, but... Offensively, I think the setters, like the quarterback, I guess you could say, because they, they mostly like run the, run the show. So, Yeah. And libero can be a scary position to play too, can't it? Definitely. I'm an undersized libero, that's for sure. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little intimidating, but you just have to know that you have to trust yourself and know that you're good enough to be on the court. So, Have you ever taken one square off the melon? Definitely, this club season. How embarrassing is that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> pretty embarrassing. Because let's face it, if you're playing the opposition and their libero takes one off the melon, your whole bench is laughing. The whole team is like just pumped up because of it. It, it can really shift the momentum. Definitely. Uh, of a set, can't it? God goes wild because they love it and they just think it's a huge play. So everyone's just, everyone's just looking at you. So. But does it hurt? Like right off the nose, it's got to hurt. Not for me, not really. I don't really know why. I think it's just like the adrenaline just kicks in. It's just like, oh crap, that just happened. And then I just clear out of my mind and just go on to the next play. Well, so, okay, go like this. Let's see the side profile. <laughs> see, I got a bigger nose than you. So it would probably hurt me more than it would you anyway. So yeah, that's awesome. All right. So uh, did you have a chance to see many of the men's Rattlers volleyball games this season? Um, not too many of them because uh, I traveled to. I played a uh, club in Lethbridge. Okay. So every single time they had a home game, I'd be gone because I was in Lethbridge like five out of like the seven days a week. Um, so like, so like I would, I only saw a couple of the games if they're like, um, like on the weekends, mm -hmm. uh, like every other weekday, but. I so what what do you know about this team that you're coming into and uh what what do you think that you are going to add to this team i love the group of guys i practice with them a whole bunch um they're all really nice so they all they really bring you in like as like a family member really quickly um i just think i could i i'd bring like obviously the defense part of it um i'm really loud on the court <laughs> and i know like I agree okay. to play is really well. So, like, just knowing where, like, that hitter is going to go is just, I think, I have, like, more of an advantage than most people. And I don't know, if I take a ball to the face, it doesn't really affect me that much. <laughs> so, that sort of thing. Just just shake it off and, and move forward, right? Don't even worry about it. Yeah, for sure. Looks like we got... Looks like we got a little bad connection here. Let's give it a second to uh, reestablish and so on here. All right. Okay, so when you say that you're a loud player on the court, uh, you mean that when you're waiting for the opposition to serve, you're, you're chatting each other up, you're building each other up, you're encouraging them. Is, is that what you mean by a loud player on the court? For sure. Just so like calling seams, being talkative with the boys on the court, seeing like two blockers up, one blocker up, calling the shots they have on the, like they have line cross, roll shot tip, anything on there, just really like like sc scanning the other side of the court and then 
taking the initiative to yell out what they have open or just saying what scenes you have all the time. Um, or just say like, um, we're down a little bit. I'll be like the loudest one. I'll, I always try at least to be the loudest one on the court to hype everyone else back up. But other than that, that's really how like, I'm really on the court too. <laughs> like, right. So, so when you're waiting for the serve, you're observing, you're looking for just little pieces of information exactly. that, could, that could be vital for, for your team. Exactly. And do you often point out things that the other guys might not even notice? Yeah. So like some people will be, when, when we're getting service receive, you might see that one of the players on the other side cheating in a little bit because they might be keying a hitter already. Yeah. Um, so... I always tell the boys, oh, you already have the libero already on the tee line there. Probably reverse the ball and then hit it cross court so the libero wouldn't be able to get it or something like that. Or if I see, like, on service Eve, if, if, um, if they're keying one of the players already and they're cheating to one side, I'll say you'll have three blockers up on you already and then that just set it with no two to reverse the ball or set somewhere else where the blockers aren't stacked on them. All right. So that's what you offer on the court. What kind of player are you in the locker room? You know, are you, are you a leader? Are you the guy to, 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 you know, give that pep speech, you know, before the game and get all the guys together and just kind of be the leader uh, in that regard? I mean, being a new player, you're not going to have that role straight up. But back in McCoy, is that the kind of guy you were? Yeah, so I was, <laughs> I was a captain for uh, all three years. Um, Even yeah. in grade 10, you were the captain. Um, not for the senior team, because I played on the senior team and the oh. team, so I was the captain JV for JV, and then my grade 11, grade 12 year, I was captain both years, but I was kind of like mm -hmm. co-captains my grade 10 year on the senior team, just because I was the setter. <laughs> okay. Um, when I said I was loud, I think that's another thing, too, is that, like, I can take initiative of, like, hyping the boys up in the locker room, not even just, like, on the court, um, but I definitely respect... Who, who like the, like the seniors obviously who can obviously do that um, themselves, but I always try to be like helping the boys to get to get hyped up before a game as well. Do you help keep them loose a little bit as well? I mean, the the men's volleyball team this year they started strong, but they had a real slump a couple of games in, and it seemed like they had a tough time kind of hitting their stride for a while there. I think there's um, a lot this season with. Uh, with everything going on, I think they lost a couple of players as well mid, mid -may, midway through. So I think it was, it was a little hard getting their rhythm back in. So like, I think they just need, they, it was hard for them to like refocus and like relearn everything about a couple of players or like a couple of key things in the game. So I think bring, coming into this season that we, we all know what we want and we all know what to do this season and like how to better ourselves. What did Coach Tyler offer you that made you said, yup, Rattlers is the team for me. <laughs> did he say, did he say, all right, all right, Justin, you can have whatever number you want on the court. You could like, what, what, what does he do to get that commitment from you to come to this team? Because I mean, you could have gone to a number of other teams, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, Tyler, Tyler's just a great guy. And Tyler, me and Tyler work together at SportCheck. And he's always just, he's always like have, has always followed my volleyball path mm -hmm. and he's he's no, he knows a lot about me um and we always when we always sat down after practices or when we had our meeting before i signed he was always saying um how i always like i'm a great player on the court and off the court and how i just loved how we were already close and i knew he knew a lot about the game already and especially since he just graduated from the medicine at college he knows how to like win and he knows like the things to do to win Mm -hmm. So, I don't think it's too much of like what he said to me, but like of like what we've already like gained together as friends and yep. like background with volleyball. So, and being comfortable with the coach is so important, right? Nobody likes getting ripped to shreds by their coach. Having a coach that you respect and respects you that it goes a long way. Exactly. All right. You work at Sport Check. Yeah, I do. How, how long have you worked there? Two and a half years. Good. What What do you enjoy about working there? I'd imagine. I mean, hey, you get a great staff discount, right? Yeah, I, mostly that. <laughs> I <love laughs> the discount there. I don't think I'll ever shop at a sport check without the discount. That's right. <laughs> um, but I I collect shoes. <laughs> so 
I love working and I work in the footwear section there. So I love just selling shoes to other people, making them have good, like especially basketball shoes. I sold a lot of shoes to the Rattlers. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. I just, it's pretty fun working there. Okay, so in volleyball, we see a lot of, okay, what are, what are some of the popular volleyball shoe brands? <laughs> um, I love Kobe's. Kobe's is my number one go-to, Kobe Bryant. Wait, that's basketball shoe though, isn't it? Yeah, so a lot of people who, wear, who play volleyball wear basketball shoes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, just the, the high tops, they add a little bit of extra support to the ankle then? Is that kind of what you look for? Some of them are low top, depending on like which shoe you get. Um, most of the Kobe's are low top, but they, he did come out a couple years ago with some high tops. Okay. Um, I know some Kyrie, a lot of people wear some Kyrie's, like Kyrie Irving. Um, a lot of people wear LeBron. Wow. Yeah. See, I, I, I didn't notice that. I thought there was like, I thought there was distinct volleyball brands, whether it's Mizuno or like some of the other ones. Wait, yeah. does, does Mizuno even make shoes? I have no idea. Yeah. So a lot of, some people wear them. Um, some people wear them, some people don't. A lot of people like the basketball ones just because they're nice. Like they're way, they're nicer looking and they are like basketball shoes. They have like actual like basketball players who wear them. Um, so I, but I know a lot of people who wear like Asics and Mizunos. Okay. Now, it, if there's one thing I've learned about our conversation right now is that you have a, you have Filipino ancestry. Is that correct? Yeah. Now, Back in the Philippines, many, many years ago, there was a leader, uh, leader's wife, and her name was Imelda Marcos. And she was famous for having the most ridiculous shoe collection in the world. And so with that, I ask you, how many pairs of shoes do you own? <laughs> uh, my dad and I collect Jordans. And uh, we're starting to collect Yeezys as well. They're just like designer shoes. I think we probably have like, Uh, okay, I, b I better brace myself for this number because it sounds like you're like you're very hesitant to even say. Go ahead, give us an estimate. How many pairs of shoes? I don't get the number wrong, KJ. I think it's just probably like around ballpark, probably around fifty, probably more. Yeah, that's not bad. I think Patrick at the college actually owns more than that. So there you go. Ballpark. I probably have them more. I don't want to get the number wrong. <laughs> okay. What is the rarest or just most interesting pair of shoes that you own? I think my dad has a pair of Jordan infrareds that are really nice. Okay. What is, what, 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 what's so special about those? What color are they? Like limited edition and they're like red high tops. Okay. And good condition. And if like you were to sell them, he would get a lot of money for them. So. Wow. There you go. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Good for you. All right. So tell everybody what you've been doing this summer then. Obviously working your part-time job. Uh, probably some training and so on. What other kinds of fun stuff have you been doing over the past couple of months? Yeah, so I've just been working a little bit. Um, just been, uh, I've just been getting into, since the gyms just opened up, we've, a lot of, me and my friends have been playing a lot of beach and a lot of indoor volleyball lately. For this past week, we've been playing a lot. Um, other than that, my friend just moved to Lethbridge, so I've been going to Lethbridge a couple times just to go see her. Um, my sister just moved to Calgary, so I went to Calgary and went to go see her as well. Mm -hmm. Gone to the lake once this week, uh, this summer already too. Lake it just in Brooks, like Newell, Newell. So it's pretty good. Ah, good for you. Good for you. Once again, Justin Barcelona joining us right now. He's uh, one of the new recruits for men's volleyball. He'll be on the court. Well, hopefully this fall, practicing and uh, game action. Fingers crossed in uh, in January. So we're really excited to see him on the court and uh, just all the things that he can do. He says he's a, he's a leader on and off the court. He's chatty. He's loud. He's going to keep all of us entertained. So <laughs> we're excited about that. All right. We always wrap it up with show and tell. And so I'm going to turn it over to you. It's got to be something that has either a deep personal meaning or something that's got just a really cool. <laughs> no problem. I actually wear it all the time. I don't know if you can see that. It's a religious, it's a like, Catholic thing. It's called a scapular. Okay. Um, I always wear it even on and off the court all the time. I can just leave it out. Okay. And, 
Catholic thing is called scapulary. My grandma brought it from the Philippines and was blessed by like a priest. I just wear it just because it's like something to like protect me, I guess. Um, cause you come from a really Catholic family. Okay. So, like, what, what, what does, what does your Catholic, uh, uh, faith mean to you and what, what, how do you think it benefits your day to day life? Um, well, with everything going on right now, I think just like, he like, like God leads us in like the right path all the time. Like, that's what we believe. He, he'll always lead us in the right path. Always keep us like safe and healthy. Um, it's actually been a big thing as well because my dad, my dad was sick. He had a kidney failure. And so we just believe like, and we always prayed for him as, as well. So, um, and he got through it. He finally got a kidney, a kidney transplant and he's, he's well, and he's um, on his feet all the time, always biking. So I think it's gone a long way, like in that sense. I think that's one of the reasons why I wear these is just cause like, it's just like a miracle happened in front of our eyes and like, I mean, believe that God is true and that he'll always keep us safe and healthy all the time. So, Awesome. Awesome. Very well said. Justin Bastolonia joining us right now. Uh, do you know what number you're going to be wearing this year for the Rattlers? I am wearing Kobe's number. Kobe Bryant's number. Number eight. 24. Oh, eight. Okay. <laughs> numbers, but 24. We did, numbers don't go that high. I kind of, kind of, that's going eight. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Is that, is that a volleyball rule? You can't have a number over a certain thing? Like I, I think, I, don't, I just think we don't have the Jersey 24. I okay. think it only went to 18, I believe. Okay. Yeah, so I think I put it eight because I don't think there was a 24. So you might want to check up on that, my friend. Why? Because eight is a retired number. Oh. Or an honored number. I'm not really sure, but oh, right. there's, a, there's a banner up in the court that says Bell number eight. Yeah. And so you, you, you might have to make a phone call to uh, his parents and tell them a little bit about yourself and then ask them if you can wear that number. You know what I mean? I'm sure they would, but, you know, sometimes that's how sports work when you want that number, right? Right. I forgot about that because they were honoring him because didn't he pass away and he was part of the men's volleyball team? Yep. Right. Exactly. So there you go. That's what I would recommend. I'd recommend you somehow get a hold of his parents and just kind of introduce yourself. And, and uh, I'm sure they'd have no trouble with it. But I think that's kind of the right thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, I totally forgot about that as well. I forgot when you're we choosing numbers that number eight was an honored number. Yeah. But hey, you know what? It sounds like you're the perfect guy to, uh, you know, to, to, to wear that number, right? So I know he was a special guy, and it sounds like uh, you know, you're going to be a special player on the court to watch as well. Everybody, Justin Bastolonia joining us right now. Watch for him. Libero, men's volleyball this upcoming season. We're so excited. Congratulations uh, on, on being a new student at Medicine Hat College. It's a, it's a great facility. It's a great college. Uh, it's, it's a family you know, the team is a brotherhood in so many ways, and uh, we just want to welcome you to the team. Thank you so much. All right. There he goes. Take care, my friend. Justin Bassalonia right there. All right. Hey, I'm impressed by that guy. I don't know about you guys, but I think he's, uh, he, he's definitely going to be a treat to watch this year. Uh, it's great to learn a little bit about these players, uh, you know, and kind of what they're like in their personal life. And that is the whole point of this series is to, to get to know you guys a a little bit more uh, student athletes and coaches and alumni and, and new recruits and so on. That's what it's all about right there. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching tonight. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we got another one coming up tomorrow. So keep an eye on the Rattlers Facebook and Instagram tomorrow morning.